CJ Entis with a chance to move to the finals against the GE Tigers. SKT, their season on the line. So Cassiopeia banned once again from CJ. They've taken it out every game so far this season, and it will be the Shivana. Again, banned against Shy. Wow. And LeBlanc taken away against Faker. CJ not wanting to first pick that one. So we could see the Lulu ban as third and repeat the bans for CJ from last game. I'm just still surprised that we're seeing that Shivana banned. I mean, is it really that much of a threat in terms of first pick potential? No, you, you probably, whoever's on red side is probably going to get it, but leaving the Urgot up again with how well space played into the Hecarim could be dangerous. Same ban so far. Yeah. Shivana is here as last time. Oh, Coco's going to be perfectly happy playing Vlad too, unless Faker takes it. Okay. Callista banned once again. So, Urgot or Hecarim, which one is CJ going to get? You know, I mean, either way, they're gonna, they've been not so good. good either way. Yeah, I mean, SKT wanted this side so they could get two picks. They're gonna give Shy that Hecarim. Do you think maybe a, even a different band would have been fine so they could have gotten at least Urgot or Hecarim themselves? Uh, I don't, I think that you know CJ is going to first pick Urgot just like they getting, did in game one, and even if you get the Hecarim, I wouldn't bank on space not having those great ults again because he yeah. really seemed on top of dealing with the home guard flanks. Yeah. Marin's Hecarim doesn't seem quite as good as Shai's Hecarim as well either too, so maybe you just put Marin. I mean, do you just put him on a Maokai at this point? Put him on Rumble? Uh, yeah, Rumble Possibly, too. we know he's a yeah. great Rumble player. Rumble still certainly pickable in this meta. It does leave you with a timing window problem though. Uh, you go to late game with the Rumble against the Hecarim, you're probably not going to have a good time if you're on even gold. You know, another thing we haven't really talked about is how much of a priority is Sivir right now for both of these two teams? Well, How early can you pick it? SKT wanted to deny it last time. Maokai has been Marin's best champion this season. Yeah, that by is, far. That is true. Uh, so they could go back to that and take away the Lulu at the same time, but this would mean Faker on Lulu, more than likely. And we did see them win. SK Telecom did beat the GE Tigers with Faker on Lulu. It's certainly possible. That was kind of a takeaway at that point as well, too. I really don't think you need to prioritize the Lulu at this point in time. Shy is the main Lulu player on CJ Antis. And so without the Lulu in his hands, I, I don't think you take it. So they're yeah. going to grab the Rek'Sai instead. OK. No. Oh, wow. Really? Well, we don't know where this Lulu is going to. It is a bit of a flex pick. They don't have to take the Maokai here. I'm just surprised they took the Lulu. This will be the first time we see Rek'Sai tonight. Banned in game one, if you open but untaken yeah. in game two. I suppose if you don't take the Maokai, at least there's a bit of a question as to where the Lulu is going anyway. Mission's gonna be perfectly happy taking that Nunu though. Of course it will be. And the yep. Nautilus. Might as well take it. You're not showing anything right now if you're CJ Entis. You've been winning just with these comfort picks. Seems like uh, SKT may be setting themselves up for maybe a Kog'Ma. Possibly, but you're not going to have the Nunu for the the, the, uh, the, the, the Juggermaw here. Juggermaw's still an option. You're going to be giving uh, CJ the Sivir too, so I don't know. It seems just so scary. Yeah, Juggermaw, Juggermaw possibility, but See what champion, they're okay, they're gonna run their speed comp with the mid Lulu again. They did win against GE. However, yeah. it must be said, this is a very dangerous comp to run because it relies on the fact that you make picks with speed boosts from Lulu and Sivir. They were able to punish GE before they could effectively group up the dragons, but you have to be really on top of your game. You have to be there first, and you have to hope that CJ doesn't group all at the same time so you can take 5v4s. You know, the, I, I do like, though, that SKT is switching things up, you know? They knew they needed to make it a change strategically, and, and they're doing it. Wow, really fast jinx lock in for CJ. And what's that final pick going to be? They have a huge tank line for the yes, jinx. they do. But we are, now he knows most likely he's going to be playing into a Lulu mid lane, so he pretty much has a lot of options. Would Vlad still be okay? He's hovering Anivia's over the Anivia for now. Great with this composition. Okay. Rise, perhaps? I like the Anivia here just so you can zone even better for Jinx. And 
and obviously you'll scale up very nicely with that pick as well. All right, CJ mulling over their final pick. They've got a couple seconds left to decide. Will we see our first rise here in Korea in quite a while? Perhaps it's, it's it going to be okay. It's a rise pick, but it's going to be a bit of a blind one. We've seen some rise in China. Um, there is a possibility that you you could take an Oriana here and try and punish it really hard and swap that Lulu into the support position. Yeah, you could. Hovering over Thresh for now. The rise is good, though, because when everybody's charging at you, you will be able to slow them down with the Rune Prison, so it will be Thresh. They're going for picks. So this is a pick comp coming out of SK Telecom. They have to take fights and get a lead early when they're 5v4 and really blitz down the enemy because if CJ, obviously, they have a lot of scaling, Rise, Hecarim, Jinx. A 5v5 in the late game will not be easily won by SK Telecom unless they're up 5, 6k gold. Yeah. They need to be an item up is is really what it boils down to. Well. And that's, that's a tall order. Now, I was skeptical of this composition when they played against GE, and they made it work. So we know they can do it against top tier teams, but with the way CJ's playing right now, I'm not sure I would gamble on a narrow timing window like this. I'm not sure I would. Well, SK Telecom is going to gamble not just uh, the game, but their entire season on this composition. Jeez. Risky. Brave it's, stuff. It did look great when they pulled it off, though. When they pulled it off previously. I like the boldness. It's, it, but will it, it is pay bold. Off? It is bold, though. It is bold. Well, Faker's made a career out of it. It's worked out so far. Will it work out here in game number three? SK Telecom. It is do or die time. They win here, or Champion Spring is done for Faker and the rest of SK Telecom. CJ, though, with a chance to make it back to their first finals in a couple of years. And can they do it? Time for game number three. Let's do it. Here we are for perhaps the last time tonight. The fans showing up SK Telecom versus CJ Enta. CJ with a very comfortable looking 2 0 lead in our final playoff match of Champion Spring. GE Tigers waiting on top of that uh, like Mortal Kombat obelisk way at the top. <laughs> CJ's been putting the fatality on everyone else so far. Can they finish the job against SKT here? Yeah. Their win here would put them to a perfect 12 and zero on patch 5.5 forward. That is pretty incredible. So, CJ, they are going to be terrifying in the late game. They've got a Blood Boil Jinx, a Rise, and a Hecarim. SK Telecom absolutely must push their advantage in the mid game. They yep. need to get kills or they will have no damage late to deal with the very tanky composition of CJ. So it's a big risk that they're doing this. Moving in to mess with those yep. cues from uh, Maokai, yeah. yeah dis disrupting the sapling so that Faker can't glitter lance his way to a slight experience advantage. Yep, you notice Marin only threw one down. He kind of expected it. Yep, they're still doing it though. Yep, so, they are. And Faker's down on the bottom side, so he's not able to help. And this means may not have that same edge for Faker. Faker can bully out this rise. Wow, actually. They're still going for oh, okay. it. Yeah. Well, Faker just threw Glitter Lance in yeah, there to Marin, help out Marin. Yeah. Marin actually took the, the Raptors right there instead. Yep. And then is going to help out. And Shy using his smite to get that level two advantage before TPing up. Marin going to be a little bit late to lane and a little bit behind in terms of levels. Well, we do have the 2v2 down in bot lane. We'll see if Space and Mad Life can make something happen here. Space is Jinx. Speaking of things that are going to be terrifying late game. Yeah, just to Ambition toying around with the blue buff right here. Seeing what he can get. He uh, hit level two off of Gromp and then went for the blue steal he, uh, immediately. He doesn't have smite Or off of moment. Krugs, excuse me. Wow, he is actually going to get it, it looks like. He'll have to consume and yeah. Bengi's pathing means that he's wow. going to get his blue buff stolen. Now, it doesn't mean a whole lot. I mean, he's Rek'Sai. It doesn't matter, really. I suppose. He's going to be still. annoyed to see that, though. It's about sending a message, Monte Cristo. <laughs> Nunu was there, eating things in your jungle. There's nothing you can do about it. 
Ambition, though, continuing to just be very irritating on this Nunu pick. Mm -hmm. It's been—it's just worked out so well for his very calculated pressure style. A support battle in the brush while banging in space, straight auto attacks, Mad Life forced to anchor away. Anchors away. It's uh, uh, not what I meant to do at all, but it happened anyway. Getting the crab on the way out, Ambition as well. So Bengi, yep. not going to be the easiest gang for him. He could try and take away the red buff here. But instead, opting for the Raptor camp instead. Yep. Early blue transfer, very interesting. So they uh, get steal the enemy blue, and they're going to give it over to Coco. Uh, depending on when he goes back, he's very close to his tier at the moment, starting with the the Sapphire Crystal. So that will mean that Coco will stack that tier up faster than normal, depending on his back timing. Now, Rek'Sai was seen coming in from behind. Yeah, that's right. They may be able to catch Bengi here. Mad Life getting the stun off space, doing a lot of damage while this. Can he make it to the Lantern? He barely gets there. Good. So no first blood quite yet. Very good ward. Yep, Mad Life not done harassing Bengi just yet. Very good ward. So they were able to see if he was taking that red buff to maybe collapse on him for a kill. CJ Antis playing around the jungle extremely well this game. Yeah. Uh, they, they got that blue buff. They already got the blue buff onto their mid laner. They denied the possible red steal in response. They are just doing a great job of reading Bengi. Yep, space able to farm really well with the rockets. No issues there. Baker, keep it up with Coco in the mid lane. I'm really curious to see how much damage this late game Rise is going to do after the little change. It's probably going to be big. Mad Life coming and getting played away. He's going to go in onto Wolf, though. Wolf taking a lot of damage. He may go down. CJ might claim first blood right here. They're trying. Wolf still down, and Ambition needs to take it. Had to flash for that one to secure it. They really tried to give it to space, but hey, at least somebody on CJ got it in the end. Yeah, and also, we did see them try and bait into the turret. Pretty late heal and flash from Wolf right there, and they yeah. got the flay off onto Ambition. Bengi in the Whoa. mid lane gets stopped up immediately by the Rune Prison. No attempt on the Dragon yet. They can clear out a pink ward at the very least, but SK Telecom falling behind. This is, you can't have this happen with this composition. No, you can't, but. It's starting to. Baker went back for an early second Doran's ring. Just Marin. Marin in not a great position right now. <laughs> no, he, uh, well, he very nearly got collapsed on. Meanwhile, speaking of collapsing, Coco mid lane. Nice flash knockup. Coco in a lot of trouble. Rune Prison not helping out as Faker gets the kill in mid lane. Yep, two flashes and ignite used there from SKT, but they actually make the play yeah. to but get the kill onto Rise, and it's very important that they slow him down early and that kill on the faker ooh, very very good for skt at that's, least that'll keep him in here that's been one of the most uh, or one of the first clearly positive things for skt that's happened in this series and if you want it to start happening you want to start happening against or uh, two faker more than anyone else unfortunately lulu not exactly a champion that's going to be snowballing very heavily into the late game well so. tell that to gbm's 1000 <laughs> ap lulu it's true Bengi coming in yeah he's gonna try to make another play doesn't have flash still gets a nice knock up onto ambition uh space a little bit lower nice play and wolf helps him pick up a kill mad life still in trouble got clipped with that death sentence on his way out Bengi making Man the plays this game, getting the ganks, using that early Rek'Sai pressure, yeah. and going after the immobile champions here in this game, knowing that Space had already burned his flash. Uh, he gets Coco's flash and kills him, kills Space. Now it's going well. Bengi making the smart decisions, going into the lanes with some of that crowd control, and this is where they needed to be. So a little bit, yeah. of, a, little bit of a disaster early on, and the kill getting the first blood going on to getting killed, actually, Wolf. Whoa, that was almost a sentence. <laughs> oh. Way to go, English major. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. It was perfect. <laughs> wow, well, I mean, I think you're seeing what a difference Bengi is making already See, for SK Telecom. It's really just that I, I have attained such a mastery of the English language that now I can I can just go and make up sentences. I'm going to become the Joyce of, of casting. Eventually, You're, it's just going to be like portrait of an artist, of the artist <laughs> as a young man. You're not going to understand anything that's happening. You're going to bring like the Dada art movement to the English <laughs> language. It's going to be It's, it's all be It's all amazing. part of my, my master plan to turn League of Legends casting into some sort of performance it's art. It's like I'm in a purple room <laughs> with a penguin on a vacuum cleaner. I, I guess it must be art. Okay. Whatever you say. Thanks a lot, Marcel Duchamp. <laughs> Jerk. Don't get me started. 
Oh boy. Well, on that note, I really think they should have brought Bengi in in game two. What do you say? Yeah, I think <laughs> they should have had him in in game one. Yeah. Well, Tom has been playing well. Putting a, a rookie in this kind of high pressure situation carries some risk. And I... Seriously, yeah. Well, I mean, this has been the, the season for questionable roster choices uh, right from the beginning, huh? For a lot of teams here. At the end of the day, we can question uh, their choices, but all uh, Koma has to do is shrug and say, hey, at least I'm not nodging. <laughs> well, Coco going for the very slow build here. Tear into Rod. Yeah, Marin forced to TP into the top side, so TP advantage right now for Shy. We'll see if he uses it to get back into lane. Well, I think especially with how things have been going so far, CJ just really committing to that ultra late game, you know? Yep, they, they certainly are. Makes a lot of sense. So Dragon, there has to be some sort of Dragon attempt soon, though, one would imagine. Uh, if SK Telecom is going to snowball this if they want to force a fight, but it'll be difficult without the TP and Shy opting not to use it to get back in the top, sacrificing a few CS, and here comes Becky. Oh, yeah. All right, SKT. What is this? Someone other than CJ getting the first dragon? This is interesting. Well, I guess SKT did last yeah. game too, but still. Yeah, Tom soloed it. Bit of a turnaround. Just a using new new not getting the first dragon. That's the surprising thing. There you uh, go. Using, wow, big cheer from the SK Telecom side. Well, yeah, this is the Fans best. Fans uh, getting pumped up. This is the uh, most they've had to be excited about all night. I can't blame them. Still, you're not worried if you're CJ. Giving that up while the lanes are pressed. You just want to sort of last this out. SK Telecom pretty much has to get the Dragons to force fights as we move towards Dragons uh, 3 and 4. It's all about the late game. All about the patience. Yep. I've, I just noticed that Maokai is yet another champion in League of Legends that suffers from a severe underbite. <laughs> they, really the need some, they really need some dentists in Runeterra. It's the latest trend in uh, League of Legends, severe underbites. I mean, look at Rek'Sai, Maokai. Orthodontic fashion. Yep. Even Sivir looks like she's rocking a bit of the underbite in that portrait. <laughs> Nar really the, the worst case, though. Yeah, no kidding. He's got it rough. Nunu knew a little bit too, maybe. Hashtag is more. Okay. Well, Wolf at six first. So you continue to push this in. Slight CS advantages across the board from SKT. And uh, should be pretty much just farming here for the next few minutes. SKT not going to want to make a play. Bang Wolf standing out of ward, so not being quite as tricky, but they have they have pushed the lanes. Oh. Here we go, Ambition coming in. Yep, snowball onto Faker, but Faker having no issues whimsying his way out of there besides Spanky was close behind anyway. Just trying to clear that wave a little bit with the yeah. Rise ultimate. And the tower's getting chipped slowly and steadily in three lanes by SK Telecom though. Yeah, wow, Marin really putting the hurt on to shine in the top lane. Bengi looking for a bit of harassment right here. He's got the ward for the vision. He does indeed coming up, and he'll smite it, it away. Ambition turns with the snowball, but Bengi should be able to just get out easily. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Standing on it out of spite, as he recalls. <laughs> He's like, well, fine. You're never going to use this tunnel again. Yeah, Bengi doing much, much better than Tom having it. Of course, playing Rek'Sai as well, you will have more gank opportunities in the early game. I thought you were just going to say a better game. <laughs> you know, playing Rek'Sai, you will just have a better game but yeah I think I think SKT has given themselves an, a shot here but again it's all about the late game CJ is going to be extremely strong and SKT is going to need to push this lead a, a lot more before they can get comfortable yeah but they're starting to they're starting to pull out with that lead the, the creep score leads are getting bigger for SKT especially in the mid lane yep but CJ actually doesn't have that much damage on their mid and bot turrets, in spite of the fact that they have been pushed up for a lot of this game so far. So some some good defense here. And Marin's TP will be back up. Shy still not TPing up into the top side, losing a few more creeps. Another wave will go down to that turret before he can get there. So more and more of an advantage for Marin as Opting for that Merc Tread first, actually. That is curious. That is very huh. curious. 
Yeah, I mean, you see that on Hecarim a lot, but getting that on the Maokai is a bit surprising. Hmm. Maybe he's concerned about team fighting early right here and wants that tenacity to deal with the AP, the, the tenacity for the Rise and the and the Nunu. Nice damage there. Yeah. Coming in from Faker, just with that Athene so far. Bengi down, they just want to push down the turret. Yep. And Lulu is certainly good at Nice recall. This is really well done. I had to force Nunu to come into the mid lane and show himself right now. And yep. Wow, space got really low in the bot lane, meanwhile. Yeah, actually, they didn't even have to use a summoner to get him that low. No. Coco going to be able to heal a little bit with the spell bam off that wave and his ultimate, but still more and more damage going down. And CJ crumbling a little bit here. Yeah, well, the combination it, of... It can be dangerous to pick three scaling lanes. Yep, it certainly <laughs> can, yeah. I've heard this somewhere before. Knock up on the Mad Life. They've got the lantern there for Bengi if he needs it, but he will be just fine. Just trying to get as much damage. Look at what Bengi's doing. Yeah. He's moving from lane to lane, trying to zone people off the towers and delay recalls just so they can push objectives. So Bengi really with a good plan about how his team's going to win. He's made a in big this game. In this yeah, game. He's, he's gotten about overall between mid and bottom, he's gotten about two thirds of a tower's HP down just on that little series of plays alone. And now he's going to start counter jungling the Raptors while Coco goes after blue. You know, we talked about how the mid and bottom turrets for CJ hadn't taken a lot of damage yet. Well, that's changed quite a bit now. SKT has been able to get a lot done in the last few minutes. Have indeed. Well, Faker going to go take the blue buff on the other side. And we're just waiting here. That gold lead's really going to go open up. If SK Telecom can get those outer turrets down, it's going to power up their comp too because they have to have more places to create picks in this game. And the, the deeper wards they can get in, the more likely CJ will be to be out of position so they can use the whimsy and the on the hunt to quickly just chase somebody down. Now, if you're CJ, do you consider maybe just giving up this next dragon? Because if you lose a team fight, you're not just going to lose a dragon. You're going to lose, like, two turrets as well, too. And then the gold lead's going to be huge. Yeah, I think SK Telecom actually is perfectly fine with sitting in lane at the given time, too. Okay. Uh, because they want to get those turrets down, and it's it's a slow process, but it is happening. They are winning the War of Attrition. So CJ going to try and move forward right now and get some level of vision control over this dragon. Yeah, dragon is live. Coco's very weak, though. Tier in a very... He just picked up his rod. Not a lot of stacks. It, it may be folly for CJ to really commit to this one if all of SK Telecom are there. Wow, folly. That sounds serious. It will be folly <laughs> to engage this dragon. Oh, thank you. Tunneling his way out of there. All right, well, SKT, they've got a lot of vision near dragon. CJ's got a little bit left ward-wise. But again, and Marin recalling, he's ready to come back in. He got home guards too, so Marin maybe looking for an opportunity to do a little yeah, bit of flanking himself. They've got so himself. much speed with the crab, the home guards, it's really dangerous. Oh, there's a Sivir engage onto Ambition. Oh, the death sentence misses, so Bengi still coming in though. Madlife trying to zone, but they're chasing Ambition away. Okay. There's the teleport coming in. Maokai right onto Ambition, even with the nude wall, he's going to go down. Meanwhile, Marin may be in a little bit of trouble too. Here, Shy over the wall with the onslaught of Shadow. CJ might be turning this one around here. Bang, still doing a lot of damage though, and CJ Ricochet. getting pushed back. Yep, there it is. A damage from Bang Space. Flashes. Faker picks up the kill, though. Lantern wow. right out of that one. Close so SKT call. gets the jump down. Marin goes, but Bengi has shown up big this game so far. No kidding. Now they're going after the dragon. They're going to get it. This is the lead that SKT needs. It certainly is. And Faker zoning out the rest of CJ just to protect that dragon. Tower He's going to well. take down the turret. And that bottom turret's not going to last long as well, too. You can already see Bang heading down there. Yeah, with Jinx gone, it's going to be very hard to defend. And Let's this, take a look at this one. Yeah. Ambition gets targeted very early. Jinx is not there. Hecarim still recalling. Meanwhile, Marin easily able to get the drop. Wolf walks up, flays him out of the absolute zero. Pretty decent channel, though, all things considered. Yeah. And Shy gets in here. Look at this ult. Shy's going to have great ultimate, right? Breaks up everyone. And Jinx looks like maybe starting to get some resets. Very dangerous position. Bang walks forward though. Coco still weak, not able to deal with the Sivir very well. There's the Lantern getting ripped backwards as a Glitter Lance finishes the Jinx off. Yeah, and you know, it's just, this is why I was saying, if you're CJ, you may just want to let that dragon go because yeah. that's exactly you know what we were worried about happening happened. Well, they lost the dragon, they lost the fight, and they lost the turret too. 
and SKT got the perfect conditions. They got yep. the 5v4 they needed. And they chased Ambition down with all those speed boosts. Oh, they're going to dive Marin here, and it looks like they might be able to pick up a kill. Actually, Shy getting a bit low. Marin! Too tanky. Wow, yeah, they can't take him down. Bengi here again to counteract the push. Bengi's been great. Still 100% contribution for kill. I mean, it's only five, but yep. he's been all over the map making plays, and they're starting to feed Faker a bit, too. And those upgraded Merc Treads actually working out really well for Marin in that situation. Seriously, yeah. Well, you get the home garden, you can kind of keep up with Hecarim, right? So now they're looking around the map right now, seeing what else they can take. Faker in the bottom lane, rapidly approaching that death that death cap, and they'll be quite happy to have that one. There should be this wave where the turret goes down in the bottom side. Space just not there to defend. They're going to deny as much CS as possible. Of course. Yeah. Gl Glitterland's nearly clearing away by itself right now, Faker. Well, it will when he gets that death cap. Pretty yeah. damn far ahead. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is exactly what SKT needed. <laughs> you can never you can never count SKT out when they're down 0-2. Yeah, and CJ, you have to be so careful about fighting fights like that, especially when yeah. you know Marin is just recalled and Shy is still trying to clean up his lane and ha having to recall before he actually teleported in right there. Well, Faker denied so much from space in that bot lane. Yeah, still is. About a wave and a half, actually, that yeah. was just denied. So space now down 50 CS, losing a lot to the turret this game. Well, about a 40 CS lead for Faker in mid lane too. I mean, yeah, 20 up is, for Marin. This SKT. is exactly where SKT needs to be, and they took a risky yeah. composition, and they got the fights they needed and played it out, played it out very well. And a lot of it's Bengi. They, they, I think CJ started to panic after their turret started getting chunked, and now. Oh, shy. Speaking of panicking, has to alt out of that one. Uh, Bengi's pressure was really what has kept SK Telecom in control of the tempo this game, and yep. so he deserves some major props for his jungling. Well, he's certainly on his way to an MVP performance if they can finish yep. this one out. 100% kill contribution so far as well. Yep, and there goes the top turret. So three to zero now, two to zero in Dragons. Huge lead, and now, now CJ's in the very uncomfortable position where they have to fight every Dragon now. Uh, if, they, if they don't just want to get whittled down in terms of that five dragon, four dragon, five dragon timer. You know, Space has that infinity edge. If they can maybe get something going, if he can get those resets, they can still That's win it. a fight, but it's going to be tough. But yeah, that, that really is it, you know? That's it. That's what they've got to have. And Coco's got a long time before he'll be able to put out enough damage to really be a big threat. Also, he has no armor against this Sivir yeah. that is quite fed That's at true. this point in time. So getting close to that static shiv, and he's not going to be able to stand toe to toe with Sivir, especially since uh, he's going for that Seraphs next. No sign of of any armor really coming. Here we oh, go. Sivir all just to push it back off of this turret. Nice walk the towers. Yep. They'll get a little bit of damage. Maybe a maybe a bit too over eager to use that ultimate. Uh, if you can get the hook, I think you're. Ah, uh, okay. Trying to. There wasn't any other play they could make on the map at the moment. It's pretty low cooldown anyway. So try and make that play, try and punish them even further, but they didn't overcommit to it. Yeah. Teleports up for both top laners, so when Dragon comes back up in a minute 30, they'll be able to uh, use those if they need to. In the meantime, SK Telecom can just kind of wait it out. They're in that great position where they can just keep pressure on the lanes and wait for Dragons. Yep. It's like you said, CJ needs to fight it from now on. And they're, they're just farming out in all three of the lanes, and keeping everything nice and pushed up. They have that big split push edge. Yeah. Ambition went for the Aegis this game, which against this Fed Sivir, not gonna be doing a whole lot. At least oh. it works against the Static Shiv, I suppose. I mean, what are you gonna do? It, it, the Lulu's Fed as well in mid lane, so there's going to be a lot of damage yeah. coming in from you know both sources at this point. Hard to itemize against it now. Yeah, Marin going interesting item build this time, yeah. actually going for he got that catalyst early and then built Shroud and... It's kind of a buffet build, a little bit of everything. Yeah, it's with some HP. A bit yep. odd. Uh, I guess feeling like they don't really need the Righteous Glory yet because they have sufficient engage at the moment. Oh, they've got Zipper Ultimate. Yeah. They've got Whimsy in the, if they need to get anybody a little bit closer. They've got flanking from Rek'Sai and from the teleport, so... I suppose we can wait. Whoa! Uh, Benki gets grabbed, though, with that anchor. He could be in a bit of trouble here. 
Trying to get out. Can he tunnel his way away? Wolf, death sentence on the man life. Wow, meanwhile, space gets blown up. Got to see a replay of that one later. Here comes a teleport for Marin. Ambition escapes back into the river, but mad life taken down by Faker. Goodbye, nice Ambition. Hook. What a grab from Wolf. He flashed for that one, too. Meanwhile, Marin on Coco underneath the turret. Faker comes in with a wild growth on the Marin for the knockup and another kill for SKT. Man, it's this one is uh, this one's pretty over. And that's what the power of this composition in the mid game, right? Yeah. You, you can punish positional errors so easily. The easy Baron now for SKT, just in case the you know the the team fight win wasn't enough. Yeah. Well, they they know they they are still a possibility in the late game that even with their massive gold lead, the scaling is so insane here from oh, CJ that you really want to close it out. They have every opportunity to do so right now. So take take the advantage, take the Baron for free. Well, they had that small window in this game, but they uh, took a leaping dive yep. through it. Played it out really well. Yep. So Bengi, they're like, aha, we've got Bengi. Space is shooting rockets uh -oh. from the pit right now. But here comes Space, and there's the boomerang blade, Whoa. and just the absolute destruction with the chilling smite added on top there <laughs> by Bengi. That's a fast tree. Yeah, and that's you have to be in position against this composition, otherwise everyone will be there in a split second to ruin your day. There's a flash hook for Wolf as well, too. Yeah, and then there's the wild growth, keeping Coco locked up and Faker keeping Marin healthy. Dancing between the turrets, dragon number three for SK Telecom, all but having this game locked up. Well, I am glad we didn't get a 3-0 tonight, Doa. That would have been boring. Yeah, me too. And and SK Telecom, I mean, it's why we kept saying it. You know, they've been down on two. Uh-oh, here we go. They hit in the bush. They're going to try to make something happen. But the lead is so high, Shy just has no tankiness. Bang is doing way too much damage right oh, now. Oh, yeah. That was a good attempt. What else are you going to do at this point to get back into the game? Turn up. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Marin gets Rune Prison during his Righteous Glory, so he's not going to be able to do much of anything. And now they're just pushing, pushing forward, methodically taking down these Tier 2s. Ping's on the blue buff right now. Well, now CJ knows how it feels. <laughs> yeah, and SK Telecom it was very surprising the way things went in the first two games with how they, you know, really manhandled the GP Tigers in their last match. But looks like things might be where SKT want them to be now. I admire their boldness with this composition. Uh, they really know how to play it. We have to give them credit for that. Even though they, they took a risk here, CJ did pick for pretty late game champions. And so they, they took some bad fights in the mid game that probably they should have given up at that dragon. Very true. Well, grab on the Banky. Banky, pretty low health. Nice wild growth. Even alive. Oh, and the death sentence onto Ambition. Just being a bit annoying here, Faker. He will not be worried by that room prison. Teleport comes in for Shy. CJ trying to find a way to turn this one around, but Bengi may be able to come in from behind Bang here. is doing way too much damage. He's got the he's got the shields too. He's got the whimsy yep. and the lantern. He's able just to weave in and out. Marin in the meantime was constantly threatening that flank from the backside. This is the Sivernaut. Here we go. Void rush. Wow. Bengi healing right back up and getting in. Another turret down. We do see the sheen for Faker, so they're really committed just to pushing, pushing turrets. Yep. And uh, they're doing a pretty good job of it. Six down already. To zero. The, uh, yeah, to zero. Yep. The only thing that CJ has gotten this game are two kills. Bengi that definitely deserves MVP this game. Yep. Uh, what a night and day difference between uh, him and Tom. And Tom looked great in the regular season, but again, you know, it's like you mentioned, the pressure of being in this, you know, essentially semifinal match, deciding who goes to the finals, it looks like it's just a well, bit too much for the new guy. It's just for a rookie player, too, coming yeah. in, to make the kind of plays like Bengi did. These are advanced tactics for professional players. Solo Q doesn't really teach you how to do what Bengi did. Yes here and coordinate with your teammates around these turret presses and commit to certain aspects of a team composition. So yeah. while Tom, I would say, is the better team fighter, Bengi brings a significant amount more experience and kind of just veteran, veteran shot calling into SKT. I mean, this guy's got a lot of championships, so what else do you want to say, you know? There's a reason for that. He always does kind of get the, uh, you know, kind of the short end of the stick as far as popularity on SKT goes. But he's always been, you know, there doing his job well. He's a role player on SK Telecom, that's for sure. And yeah. 
he's he's had his he's had his ups and downs over the years, and definitely looked shaky at times this season. But this is his meta. The tank meta is made for Bengi. Well, in his role play, he has always been lawful good alignment, <laughs> just doing everything he can for his team. That's true. <laughs> Paladin for sure. CJ just clinging to life. 13,000 gold down, and they may never quite reach that late game. Coco, you know, might be starting to do a bit of damage. Oh. Can't grab over that wall, Mad Life. That's right. He sees everybody with the Tremor Sense, so not, not really much danger there. Also, Bengi is yeah. quite, quite tanky right now. Faker finds himself a little opportunity to deal some damage and not even get out in the lantern. Get out under yeah. his own power on Whimsy. It's like, I've got a W that handles this. <laughs> All right, here it is. Down, Number four. Frozen Heart done now for Shy, but at the same time, the armor penetration finished concurrently for Bang with the Last Whisper, so I don't think right. it's going to get a lot better for them. Well, we'll see, CJ. If this is their last chance to overall use. Oh, oh. Death Sentence missed. SKT's gonna keep going. There's a flash from Mad Life Ambition taking a lot of damage. Yeah, you can still see Sivir really making a <laughs> he, big impact on the He people. ran behind Becky. Yep, nice job. Marin coming in from behind. Nice wild growth to knock everyone up. Shy trying to get the back lines, but the kill's already coming in for Bang. There's a double. Shy has to disengage. Coco and Ambition backing away. Shy's gonna get taken down as well. Nice death sentence onto Coco. There's a triple kill now for Bang. Flashing ahead. Faker takes one. And that is going to be the game. There goes the turret. There goes the inhibitor. And I think CJ's got enough time, or uh, SKT rather, has enough time to close this one out. Yeah, Looks they, like they, they do. Should. They have. Yeah, they've got the wave. They've got the damage. And they've only got Nunu to deal with. Ambition's just going to take a walk. He's like, oh, I'm done. See you guys. And SK Telecom still alive, taking down game three. GG. Uh, nicely played by SKT. Really. Very good aggression, looking strong coming into this one. A lot more yeah. early pressure with that Rek'Sai, really helping them out. Great snowballing of the pressure they had in the laning phase, and they make that Sivir comp that we've seen from them before in that last uh, match versus the GE Tigers work again. Yeah, not quite dead yet. Koma pretty happy with that one, obviously. And Hey, what do you know? You take out the rookie jungler, you don't put Faker on a terrible champion, and things go well. <laughs> huh, who knew? <laughs> It, uh, they just, SK Telecom likes to make it exciting for their fans. So, yeah, they, uh, they do, yeah. Jeez. Single-handedly responsible for uh, bouts of